Many digital media publishers generate revenue through online advertisements, but lately this revenue stream has been threatened globally as consumers are starting to use ad blocking software. However, research has shown that in contrast to the rest of the world, many African users do not view ads in a negative light, which may offer an opportunity to online advertisements on the continent. In studio to tell us more about this uniquely African opportunity is Yaron Asabi. He's the chairman of the Mobile Marketing Association and founder of Digital Solutions Group. Yaron, lovely to have you. First of all, maybe educate us. What is ad blocking? Ad blocking is the ability to add um, something to the browser that will block ads. So often it's done, especially in Africa, because of the speed. So ad, ads actually slow down your experience on the internet. Um, and um, recently with iOS, with iPhones, uh, it's been released as an option to enable or disable. And that's why I think there's a lot of industry yes. questioning whether this is going to be something that you know, is going to be standard in all handsets. Mm -hmm. uh, with Android, which is a very big operating system in the continent from Google, uh, a lot of the phones, the low-cost Chinese handsets that we have are, are Android-based. Uh, uh, you can have a third-party plug-in as well to be able to block ads. Okay. What's at stake here? So if you're unable or if you choose to not get an advert onto your phone or, your, or whatever device that you're currently using, what's at stake for the advertisers? Well, you know, a lot of advertisers offer their content for free. So they need the advertising to support their business model in order to be able to sustain themselves. So obviously publishers are worried about it. Um, I think that um, if the advertising is done properly, then a lot of the African consumers would not have an issue with it. I think that ad blocking uh, is really as a result of consumers retaliating spam or getting yes. unrelated messages that they don't really want to see. None of us like to get ads that either slow down our internet exactly. experience or are not relevant to us. But I think that um, in terms of the ability to be able to create a right customer journey, mm -hmm. in Africa especially, we need ad supported models. Uh, for example, music streaming. Affordability is not always available for us to pay a subscription service for music. But if we're willing to receive ads, just like TV, you know, we can get the content for free. Mm -hmm. uh, same with video. And I think that uh, with the advent of low-cost smartphones in the continent, a lot more people are connected to the internet. So unlike North America or Europe, where ad blocking has become an issue when you move from desktop to, to mobile, or people are retaliating and have do not call kind of policies, a lot of time uh, we have a lot of new cu customers that actually launched the internet browser on their handset and it's the first time they experience the internet on their mobile phone mm. and it's a great experience for them as long so we have an opportunity to do it correctly yeah. now before uh, you know uh, we get a negative sentiment for the industry and, and yeah when you say this happens. is a uniquely African offering um, do you think this might change as African consumers become more and more sophisticated absolutely I think I think there's always a threat you know it's uh, um, you know, like TiVo in, in, in North America was very popular. People didn't want to watch ads while they're watching TV, yeah. so they pay a premium to do it. I think in Africa, because of this affordability issue that I mentioned earlier, I think it's actually an opportunity to do it correctly mm -hmm. and to be able to make content that n wouldn't be necessarily affordable for certain consumers through ad-supported models. If you look at Google, they're the biggest advertising company in the world. They offer you a lot of free products and services like search, email, client, but their whole model is a double-sided model. You know, I'll give you free information if you give me your attention span for adverts, you know, and, and I think that's a, a very good sustainable model when you have uh, low average revenue per user from, from consumers. So if we look at globally, how are these uh, advertisers remaining relevant to consumers? So, so, so advertisers need to be cognizant of uh, the target market, the segmentation, you know, it's traditional marketing, you know, um, just because I'm reading a car blog doesn't mean that I'm necessarily interested in buying a car, yeah. okay, and if you're going to give me a very uh, big video that I have to watch up front, it's going to cost me a lot of money in terms of my airtime or data, you know, I'm going to I'm going to reject that and I'm going to want to try and block it off. Mm -hmm. But if the advertising doesn't cost me anything and it's relevant to me and it's contextual and it's based on where I'm at. So if I did a search and I'm looking for a Chinese restaurant and I might get a voucher yes. for that Chinese restaurant to be able to walk in and it's right there, then you know that ad is a lot more relevant. So it's about using the data. It's about understanding customer insights and it's about permission marketing. Permission marketing means that you actually ask for explicit permission to communicate with that customer and you give them ads that are relevant to them. I like the, the fact that they have to ask for permission a first. Absolutely. You, know, you feel as though it's not as intrusive. Exactly. Uh, you mentioned an example, Google. 
Yes. Are there any other local companies that you're aware of that you can give us examples that have done it right? Like you said, you know, this gives us an opportunity to do it right the first Absolutely. Time. I mean, if, if you just think about Please Call Me's as a, as a unique African kind of solution. Yes. I don't have money for airtime. I send a Please Call Me message to somebody who does. That doesn't cost me anything. Mm. And then the way that message is subsidized, even though it's a free message, is through a tagging of, of, a, of another advert. Yes. A lot of us don't look at that advert, okay? No, I remember there's okay. a funeral policy exactly. thing that you exactly. <laughs> you'll get. Exactly, but if, if, if the brand managed, manages to achieve return on investment from that advert mm. and the consumer gets to use the product for free, then we've achieved the, obje the objective that we're looking at. You know, so Yaron, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon and taking us through what the digital marketing space on the African continent, this uniquely African uh, offering that we currently have. That was Yaron Asabi. He's the chairman of Mobile Marketing Association and founder of Digital Solutions.